Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session we learned about the subtraction in binary number system. In this session we are going to learn about the binary subtraction using ones and twos complement techniques. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session, at first we will revisit the subtraction in binary. Thereafter we will learn about the subtraction in ones complement technique. And finally, we will learn about the subtraction in two's complement technique. So let's revisit the concept of subtraction in binary. Now, in the previous session, when we were learning about subtraction in binary, we formed this truth table for binary subtractions. Using this, I told you any subtraction in binary can be performed. Now, just to jog up our memory, let's now perform another subtraction. This time, we are going to have the minuend. 1101 and we are taking the subtrahend 1011 so let's perform the subtraction now now 1 minus 1 that is this particular case is supposed to give us the result as 0 that is the difference and the borrow in this case is 0 so we will have only the difference because we don't need the borrow as the borrow is 0 and the difference is going to be 0 let's now move on to the next unit Notice, the minuend bit is 0 and the subtrahend bit is 1. Well, it is the second case. That is, we are supposed to have the difference as 1. However, we need to borrow 1, isn't it? So, traditionally, we could borrow 1 from this place, making it 0. And we will borrow the 1 in here, making this a 2-bit binary number. Then from 1, 0, we will subtract 1 which will give us the difference as 1. However, this time, instead of performing that, I would like to illustrate you my preferred way of finding the solution. If you remember, I explained that to you verbally in the previous session. Now, let me show you how I prefer to solve it. Notice, in this unit, the minuend bit is 0 and the subtrahend bit is 1. So, clearly, minuend is less than the subtrahend. For this situation, instead of borrowing, I will start moving forward from this place towards the most significant bit until I encounter a 1. And since only the next bit is 1, therefore, instead of considering this as a single unit, I will consider both of these bits and that will allow me to consider these two bits and these two bits as a single unit. Now notice, we are subtracting 0, 1 from 1, 0. It is a 2-bit subtraction. Now, 1, 0 is 2 and 0, 1 is 1. So, if we are performing a 2-bit subtraction from 1, 0 of 0, 1, what is going to be the result? It is supposed to be 1, right? Because 1 plus 1 is 2 and since we are talking about 2-bit numbers in here, so instead of having just 1, we will now have 0, 1. Isn't it easier? Instead of performing all the borrows and all, we consider all these bits as a single unit. And thus we got the answer. Let's now move on to the most significant bit. We are performing 1 minus 1. So that is exactly this case. We will have the difference as 0. And we need not borrow anything for this. So the difference is going to be 0 only. So this is the result of the subtraction which we have just performed. Is it correct? We can always check that. However, for that, we will need the place values. Now, all the minuend, subtrahend and the difference as well is of 4 bits. So, we already know what is going to be the place values. The place values are going to be 1, 2, 4 and 8. So, let's check. The minuend in decimal is 8 plus 4, that is 12, plus 1, that is 13. Now, what about the subtrahend? 8, 2, that is 10, plus 1 will give us 11 in decimal. Now, what about the difference? Well, we have 1 only under the place value 2. So, clearly, in decimal, the result is going to be 2. And this is correct because if we are subtracting 11 from 13, we are supposed to get 2 as the answer. So, this is how we perform subtraction in binary using the pen and paper method. However, 
it's not the way how the machines actually perform the subtraction. That is, if we are performing a minus b, we will perform it in this way. However, for the machines, performing subtraction and the addition in different ways is actually cost ineffective because in order to perform subtraction and addition in different ways, that is using our ways, we will have to implement a separate circuit for the addition, that is the adder, and a separate circuit for the subtraction, that is the subtractor. So, in order to reduce that cost, in machines, subtraction is actually performed using the same adder circuit. Well, if A minus B can be performed like this, that is A plus minus B or the negative inverse of B, observe, we can perform the subtraction using the adder circuit only, isn't it? And since we are talking about binary, the negative inverse of any number can be achieved in two ways. The first one is called one's complement and coming to the second way, it is called two's complement. So that was all about the subtraction in binary. Let's now learn how to perform subtraction in one's complement technique. Now, since we are about to learn the subtraction using one's complement technique, I would like to refer to the subtraction which we have just performed. So, we will take the same minuend that is 1101 and the subtrahend we are going to take is 1011. Now, remember, we are trying to perform subtraction in one's complement technique. Therefore, as I just explained to you, instead of using the subtrahend, we will try to find out the negative inverse of that. And since we are talking about one's complement now, let's find out the one's complement of the subtrahend, that is the negative inverse of 1011. Now, in order to find out the one's complement, we will first take the subtrahend and notice it's a 4 bit number. So, we will subtract each of the bits from ones. Since it is a 4 bit number, we are subtracting 1011 from 1111. Let's perform the subtraction now. So, 1 minus 1 will give us the result 0. Then again, 1 minus 1 will give us the same difference 0. 1 minus 0 will give us the difference as 1. And then again, 1 minus 1 will give us the difference 0 once again. Now, this is the traditional way to find out the ones complement or the negative inverse in ones complement of any subtrahend. However, there is another way and that's the shortcut way. Let me show you how it is done. We will just have to toggle the bits. That is, in place of ones, we will write down zeros and in place of zero, we will write down one. So, what will happen in case of the most significant bit? Since it is one in the subtrahend, in the negative inverse of ones complement, it is going to be zero. Notice, both are the same. And the reason for that is, since we are subtracting all the bits from all the ones, we are bound to get the alternative bits. That is, for ones, we will get zeros, and for zero, we are supposed to get one. And that's the way how it is. So, we already have found the negative inverse of 1011, that is the subtrahend. Let's now perform the subtraction. Remember, we are talking about subtraction using one's complement technique. So, we are not really going to perform subtraction. Rather, we are going to perform addition. So, we will take the minuend, that is 1101. And this time, with the negative inverse, that is 0100, which is the one's complement of the subtrahend, we will perform addition. And this is done so that we can use the same adder circuit while we are performing subtraction as well. So, let's perform the addition now. 1 plus 0 is supposed to give us the sum as 1. 0 plus 0 will give us the sum as 0. Now, 1 plus 1 will give us the sum as 0 and the carry is going to be 1. Then again, 1 plus 1 will give us the result 1, 0, that is 2. And 1, 0 plus 0 will give us the result 1, 0. Now, notice the result. We performed addition of two 4 bit numbers. However, in reality, we actually performed subtraction. Now, from a minimum of 4 bits, which is also the same number of bits for the subtrahend as well, 
Do you really think if we perform the subtraction, the result is ever going to be a bit more? That is a 5-bit result. It's not, right? But still, we got this carry. Now, it's actually all right in case of one's complement technique because we are not going to use it in here anymore. Rather, we will take it and place it in here so that we can add this with the result that is the rest of the bits. And this carry is called EAC or end around carry. And the name is justified since we are end arounding the carry. Let's now perform the addition. 1 plus 1 will give us the result 1, 0. So the sum we will have as 0. Now the carry 1 will be added with this. So we will get the result as 1. Now what about the rest of the bits? We will have zeros only. Now notice, we got the result 0, 0, 1, 0, which we were supposed to get if the subtraction is correct, isn't it? So that is all about the subtraction in one's complement technique. Do remember, in this case, we don't subtract, rather we perform addition. And in order to perform that, we don't take the subtrahend right away, rather we use the negative inverse which we can find in one's complement method. That is, we can just toggle the bits and we will get the negative inverse, which is the one's complement of the subtrahend. Now, once we start performing the addition, we are bound to get the carry. Now, let me tell you why we get this carry. This carry actually signifies the minuend magnitude-wise is greater than the subtrahend. And that's true for this case because 1101 in decimal is 13 and 1011 in decimal is 11. So, the minuend is greater than the subtrahend. Now, if we don't get this carry, that will signify the minuend is actually lesser than the subtrahend. So, when we get this carry, and we will end around it and place it in the least significant bits place and we will add it with the rest of the bits. Finally, we will get the result. Now, I believe the subtraction in one's complement technique is clear to you. Let's focus on the subtraction in two's complement technique. Now, in case of subtraction in two's complement technique, we will still refer to this particular subtraction which we have performed. This time, we will take the same menu end and the subtrahend that is 1101 1, 1 is going to be our minuend and the subtrahend we are going to take is 1011. 1, 1. Now we need to find out the negative inverse of the subtrahend. However, this time we will use the two's complement method. So let's find it. Now, in order to find out the two's complement of any number, that is any binary number, we will first take the one's complement of that same binary number and then we will add 1 to it. Now, we already know how to get the one's complement of any number. We will just toggle the bits. So, 1 is going to be 0. Then again, 1 will now be 0. Then 0 will become 1. And 1, that is the most significant bit, will become 0. So, this is the one's complement. Now, all we have to do in order to find out the two's complement is, we will just have to add 1 to it. So, let's perform the addition. 0 plus 1 will give us the sum as 1. Now, what about the rest of the bits? Since they are being added with zeros, there is nothing, we will have them as they are. Now, this is the traditional way of finding out the two's complement. However, we also have a shortcut for this. Now, what is that? While finding out the two's complement of a particular number, we need to traverse the number from the least significant bit towards the most significant bit. Now, from the least significant bit, we will retain the bits as they are unless we encounter a one. And once we encounter the 1, we will first retain it as it is. However, the remaining bits towards the most significant bit are going to be toggled. That is, 1 will become 0, 0 is going to become 1, and 1 will again become 0. Notice, if we had found out the 1's complement and we added 1 with that, we would have got the same result, isn't it? So remember the shortcut for finding out the 2's complement? We need to traverse the number we are trying to find out the two's complement for from the least significant bit towards the most significant bit. We will keep on retaining the bits as they are until we encounter the first one. Then we will keep it as it is. However, the remaining bits towards the most significant bit are going to be toggled. So that's the negative inverse in two's complement of the subtrahend 1011. Let's now perform the subtraction. 
well we will perform the addition once again so we will take the minimum that is 1101 and with this we are going to add 0101 that is the two's complement negative inverse of the subtrahend 1011 so let's perform the addition now 1 plus 1 will give us the sum as 0 and the carry is going to be 1 now 1 plus 0 will give us 1 and then again 1 plus 0 will again give us 1 what about the next unit 1 plus 1 will again give us the sum as 0 and the carry is going to be 1 once again we are adding 1 with 1 so the result is going to be 1 0 and if we add that with 0 we will get the result as 1 0 notice this time also we got the carry however since we are talking about the subtraction in two's complement technique this carry we are just going to discard now notice the rest of the bits performing subtraction between 1101 however in reality we actually performed addition instead of subtraction with the negative inverse of the subtrahend using two's complement technique anyway the subtraction between these two was supposed to give us the result as 0010 that is 2 isn't it now remember the significance of the carry if the carry is being generated also in case of two's complement technique that signifies the minuend is magnitude wise greater than the subtrahend if this was not there we would have guessed that the result is a negative value anyway we are going to have this carry and since we are dealing in two's complement technique we will simply discard it let's now see all the subtractions side by side so when we perform a minus b in pen and paper method we will perform it like this that is proper subtraction however instead of performing a minus b in the machine's way if we perform a plus minus b that is addition of a with the negative inverse of b we can have two ways to do that first that is the once complement technique in this we will take the minuend and we will add with that the once complement variant or the negative inverse of once complement of the subtrahend that is this one will now be 0, 0100 0, 0. if we achieve the carry this means the result is a positive value in other words the minuend is greater magnitude wise than the subtrahend and then we will take this carry and we will end around it to add it with the rest of the bits finally we will get the result however in case of two's complement that is the second way we will just perform the addition between the minuend and the two's complement negative inverse of the subtrahend that is 1011 will now become 0101 and i have already explained how to find out the two's complement of any number in a shortcut approach now notice in case of two's complement the carry was generated which also signifies the positive outcome however we discarded it now what is the reason for that if you remember the traditional approach of finding the two's complement is actually finding the one's complement at first then adding one to it and in one's complement approach of subtraction we had the carry and we added it at last however in case of two's complement we already have added the carry in here that is we found out the one's complement and then we added the one to the least significant bit to generate the two's complement variant isn't it and that's the reason why the carry is being generated is also being discarded so this is how the machines actually perform subtractions in binary so in this session we covered the topics first the revisit to subtraction in binary concept then we learned about the subtraction in one's complement technique and finally we learned about the subtraction in two's complement technique all right people that will be all for this session in the next session we are going to learn about subtraction in hexadecimal number system so i hope to see you in the next one thank you all for watching